In the endless flow of time, nature has always been a loyal companion to humanity, offering us moments of peace and deep reflection. Standing before the early morning, when the first light of a new day begins to filter through the leaves, the entire space seems to be dressed in a fresh, pure coat, full of hope. Birds soar across the sky, like gentle, fleeting strokes, dancing in the vast expanse of the heavens. Every breeze that passes, I brings with it the breath of the earth, cool and gentle, as if reminding us that we are never alone on this journey of life. The clouds drift lazily, changing shapes, like fleeting thoughts, in the soul of every human. Every moment is a miracle, every wave that kisses the shore, every rustle of leaves carries its own story. Nature is not just a place for people to retreat and relax, but a place where we find a deep connection with ourselves and everything around us. The beauty of nature isn't always easy to recognize, but when we listen and feel, everything becomes vibrant and full of hope. In every breath of the forest, in every blossoming flower, in every song of the birds, we realize that life continues on, even when we face difficulties and challenges. Nature teaches us patience, the art of appreciating the simple yet extraordinary things, and above all, how to love. Let us live like the leaves in the rainstorm, persistent and resilient, like the eternal streams flowing through time. Thank you, nature, for giving us the opportunity each day to synchronize with the rhythm of the universe, to feel and cherish every moment. And perhaps, in this vast world, these moments are the priceless treasures that every person deserves to experience and protect. The fascinating reproductive behavior of seahorses is one of their most extraordinary traits. Male seahorses, unlike most species, carry and give birth to their young, which is a rarity in the animal kingdom. Monogamous by nature, seahorses remain loyal to one partner, ensuring successful reproduction throughout the mating season. This behavior is one of nature's most elegant oddities. Raising seahorses on large farms in places like China, Hawaii, and some Southeast Asian countries is primarily aimed at supplying the traditional medicine market and producing medicinal products. The breeding process is carried out scientifically with careful selection of seahorse pairs for reproduction. After birth, the juveniles are transferred to separate tanks where they receive specialized care. Seahorse farms are equipped with carefully designed tanks, typically divided into several zones to optimize conditions for the seahorse's growth. Each tank is closely monitored for temperature and salinity, ensuring it closely mirrors the seahorse's natural habitat, providing the ideal environment for healthy breeding and development. Birth to fully developed juveniles, the water temperature in seahorse farms is carefully maintained between 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, with salinity levels ranging from 30 to 35 parts per thousand. These specific conditions are essential to replicate the seahorse's natural environment. Advanced aeration and water filtration systems are used to ensure water quality is maintained, providing continuous oxygen for the seahorses to thrive. Male seahorses have a unique and fascinating role in reproduction. Unlike other fish species, it is the male seahorse that takes on the responsibility of incubating and giving birth to the young. Male seahorses have a specialized organ called a brood pouch, located on their abdomen, which functions similarly to a female's womb. When a female seahorse lays her eggs, the male seahorse draws them into his pouch, where fertilization and embryo development take place. The incubation process lasts several weeks, after which the male seahorse gives birth to fully formed juveniles. When the time comes, the male seahorse releases hundreds of tiny baby seahorses into the water. Each birth can bring around 2,000 baby seahorses into the world. However, according to some statistics, only about 5 out of every 1,000 seahorse offspring survive, as many fall prey to other fish and predators. Modern seahorse farms are also making use of smart monitoring technology, including cameras, to ensure that the conditions for breeding and care are optimal. This technology helps track the health and growth of the seahorses, improving the chances of successful reproduction and survival in these controlled environments. Raising seahorses is no easy feat, as it demands precision and expertise in every aspect of their care. To maintain the delicate balance of their environment, modern seahorse farms employ advanced technology, utilizing sensors and cameras to continuously monitor the well-being of these extraordinary creatures. These tools track essential parameters such as temperature, pH levels, oxygen content, 
and other environmental factors, ensuring that the Seahouse's living conditions are always optimal. The constant, real-time monitoring allows farm operators to detect any potential issues at the earliest stage, preventing any harm to the fragile ecosystem within the tanks. Such attention to detail is paramount in ensuring the survival of the seahorses, whose natural habitats are so easily disturbed, but it doesn't end with maintaining water quality. Raising seahorses involves highly specialized care and feeding practices. These little creatures, with their intricate biology, require a diet that closely mirrors what they would find in the wild. They are fed small, live crustaceans like plankton and artemia, which are rich in nutrients essential for their growth. These tiny crustaceans provide the seahorses with the necessary sustenance to grow strong and healthy, preparing them for their eventual release or sale. The feeding process itself requires careful attention, as the seahorses small size and unique feeding behavior, where they suck in food through their long snouts, means that their meals need to be constantly replenished to ensure they are fed adequately. Seahorses are a highly valuable commodity in traditional medicine, especially in China, where they are considered a precious ingredient with extraordinary healing properties. In traditional Chinese medicine, seahusses are believed to enhance vitality, improve kidney function, boost the immune system, and treat male health issues. Their medicinal value has been sought for centuries, making them an integral part of many traditional remedies. The value of dried seahusses is quite high, with prices ranging from $500 to $1,500 per kilogram, depending on the species and quality. Larger, whole seahorses with vibrant colors are typically priced higher due to their superior appearance and rarity. The main consumer markets for dried seahorses are China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and several Southeast Asian countries such as Singapore and Malaysia. Dried seahorses are often used in various traditional preparations, with one of the most common methods being cooking them into soup. The medicinal properties believed to be imparted through these preparations have made seahorses a sought-after ingredient deeply embedded in the cultural practices of these regions. However, the high demand for seahorses in traditional medicine has also led to concerns about overfishing and the need for sustainable farming practices to protect wild populations. Seahorse soup is a traditional delicacy where dried seahorses are soaked in warm water to soften them and then cooked with other nutritious ingredients like ginseng, mushrooms, red dates, and various traditional herbs. This combination of ingredients is believed to have numerous health benefits, particularly in boosting vitality and improving overall well-being. The preparation of seahorse soup has been practiced for generations, especially in places like China, where it remains an integral part of medicinal cuisine. Shark hunting, much like the harvesting of seahorses, has a long history dating back to ancient times and continuing into the modern era. Over the years, this practice has evolved from rudimentary fishing methods to the use of advanced technologies. Shark meat is consumed in many countries, while shark fins are especially prized for the preparation of shark fin soup, a dish often associated with luxury banquets. Sharks have long been valued for their high protein content and economic importance. For centuries, they have been hunted for food and commercial purposes, with around 100 million sharks killed annually. Historically, sharks were not considered worthy of conservation due to their perceived lack of importance compared to other animals. However, attitudes are beginning to shift as shark populations decline and the demand for their products rises. In many countries, shark meat is readily available in supermarkets, and shark fins remain highly sought after for their use in expensive soups served at banquets. Despite their controversial nature, shark skin is used in creating clothing and accessories, while squalene, a substance derived from their liver, is utilized in cosmetics, medicines, and even lubricants. In the world of shark hunting, modern techniques like net fishing are commonly used. Fishermen deploy large mesh nets to capture sharks, often in large quantities, leading to concerns about the sustainability of shark populations and the impact of these practices on ocean ecosystems. Shark fishing is a highly specialized practice that involves specific techniques and equipment designed for this purpose. One of the main tools used is called gill nets or encircling nets, which are set vertically in the water like a massive wall. These nets can stretch for several kilometers, and when sharks swim through them, they become entangled. 
making it easier for fishermen to catch them. Fishing for sharks requires immense physical strength and advanced skills. Fishermen typically use ultra-durable fishing rods made from materials like carbon fiber, paired with fishing lines that are strong enough to withstand weights ranging from 100 to 300 kilograms. Additionally, specially designed hooks are used to lock firmly into the shark's jaw, ensuring that the shark remains hooked during the battle. Once a shark is hooked, the process of reeling it in becomes a physically intense challenge. Often, at least two people are required to work together to pull the shark toward the boat. As the shark nears the side of the vessel, the fishermen use a pole or metal gaff to hook into the shark's mouth, helping to control its movements and prevent the animal from thrashing violently, which could cause harm to both the shark and the fishermen. During this process, boats often use bait such as small fish or animal offal to attract sharks. In some cases, vessels also utilize special sound frequencies to draw sharks toward the fishing area further enhancing the chances of a successful catch. These fishing methods, while highly effective, also raise concerns about the sustainability of shark populations and the impact of overfishing on marine ecosystems. As demand for shark products, especially fins, remains high, it's crucial to consider the long-term consequences of these practices on oceanic biodiversity.